difficult for OSIP. OSIP currently on a mulligan to six cards. You see him on the right, you see Shroud on the left. Shroud gonna start with a Mutavolt. He has a very unique deck here. Uh, we'll go over his deck list. He has 25 lands, 21 mountains, four Mutavolts. Then he has four Pillar of Flame, four Searing Spear, four Bonfire of the Dam, four Burning Earth. That's Burning Earth in the main deck. Three Brimstone Volleys, and his creatures are four Thunderbolt Hellkites, four Hellkite, or er, four Hell Rider, four Chandra's Phoenix, and four Boris Reckoner. Just see Pillar of Flame take care of that Addison's Pilgrim. This is, for lack of a better term, a big red deck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing about this deck, you're like, oh, why doesn't he have any plays? He's not going to be able to... No, that's not what this deck needs to do. On turn three, he can lay a Phoenix and see if he's got one. Boom. He does. And that Phoenix, because of the recursive nature of the Phoenix, there are very few blockers in the air. That Phoenix will probably do at least six damage, if not more. So now here comes Flint Hoof Board. This little piggy coming into the red zone, going to knock Shroud down to 17 because he doesn't have a stomping ground. Now there's a Lots on Smiter. And now Shroud will untap. He will draw, see what he finds, now, and if he's going to keep going to the sky or not. Osip is not to be, uh, you know, overlooked here. Seven power on the table. Andrew Shroud already in a position where he's in real trouble in a race. Yeah. Now, the mono red deck, this, this is a very, very different deck. He's 3-0 right now. Shroud did not have any buys at this tournament either, so he's won three the hard way. And, you know, you see a deck that has Burning Earth in the main deck, it makes you really question, okay, like, what's going on here? Is he taking a calculated risk, hoping it's fair against Jund every round? Or is this deck the real deal? Don't know. I mean, he's 3-0 so far, three legitimate wins, zero buys, so we're going to find out. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan, here in the booth with Cedric Phillips. On the left, Andrew Shrout drops that Burning Earth, sits back with Chandra's Phoenix. D, the Chandra's Phoenix now on D. Andrew Shrout has one land that will hurt him, Mutavolt, if he taps it for mana. Whereas Osip, he has th currently three lands that would hurt him if he tapped for mana. And in his deck, I think he only has two uh, non-basics. Yeah, two, uh, Sorry, two basics, yeah, I mean. Two forest in his main deck. So the rest of his deck is full of non-basics. He's ahead on the board right now, but he has to be very careful how he wants to navigate the rest of this game because, you know, if you're if you're Levinovich in this situation playing against a mono red deck that just cast a Burning Earth, you know, I, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, how much burn does he have in his deck? What do I have to play around? Is he just going to start going to the head now? How does this work? And you see him really pondering his turn about what am I going to do? What am I going to attack with? Take a look at the Chandra's Phoenix. How does this work? This one's new again. It's a little old school, but it's new again now. So how does this work? And how does everything add up into me winning this game and not losing to that Burning Earth? And that's actually main deck. Judge, can I get verification <laughs> that's main deck? Uh, we know for sure that there are four. So just to give you a sense of what this means, um, earlier in the day we saw a player that was playing a red deck that splashed green. They had 12 basics in their deck. The entire total of all of the other players the rest of this day have had 13 basics total among them. Jeez, that's a lot of feature matches. You see the attack there from Levidovich. Smiter and Bor come in, gonna chump block the Smiter. Temple Garden is gonna play untapped, gonna knock Levidovich down to 14. Two triggers, gonna put him down to 12. Scavenging Ooze, gonna eat that Phoenix, so he's actually not gonna gain any life, because Ooze is gonna gain him on Burning Earth, it's gonna deal him one. So it looks like Lepidovich is gonna be down to 12 when it's all said and done, he's but he's got a to good board. Him. Yeah, he's, he's got a him. really, really good board. Now, Andrew here, if he gets a uh, bonfire, nope, would have been in a, a pretty good bonfire moment. Yeah, would have been doing a little bit better. Now, of course, if he does draw a bonfire the following turn, he's still doing pretty gosh darn good. We're going to see what he's going to play here. It looks like he's going to have to take one and Six. go down to 13. Five mana. All right, Thunder Maw Hellkite on defense, maybe? That's a good defender unless Osip drops a Thunder Maw. Well, Osip is at 12. So he can attack your can Shroud, put Osip down to seven, take this next attack right on the face, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, go down to three, and hope that he doesn't die and then I'd like to believe oh, he has some sort of reach. really quickly. Yeah, he sure did, didn't he? Draws his card. Well, Scary either, situation. Either Osip has the... Uh, it would need to be, what, a Thunder Maw right now? Or a Gore Clan Rampager? Um... Rampager will get the will get the job done. Thunder Maul is kind of interesting, right? Because if one of the lands is like a Ravnica dual land, he you have to play it. it untapped and he would die. So this Burning Earth, you can see the kind of the agony on his face. It's making things pretty, pretty difficult right now for Levinovich. Again, main deck Burning Earth. Main deck. You see people take 
you know, it's kind of rare that you see people take a gamble like this. This could backfire badly for Shroud oh, yeah. in this metagame. But if he's got the metagame pegged the way that he thinks he does, where everyone is so non-basic happy, this works out great. I talked with Andrew about this, and I talked with another player about this, and they both playing Burning Earth Main said this. They said that right now, people are playing a lot of non-basics, but they won't be very soon. Yeah. He said very soon people are going to change because this card is going to force them to. And I, I wholeheartedly agree. This is a unique effect. It's incredibly powerful. And you see, I mean, take a look at this game. Lebedovich, his when he passed his turn, there was a Burning Earth on the table. That is it. And he had a 4-4, a Flinch of Four, and then he had a Smiter, a Flinch of Four, and that 3-3 use. He comes back to his turn at 7. All Shroud did was play a land of the Thunderbolt Hellkite. That's it. And now Lebedovich is racking his brain. Oh my goodness, I was so far ahead. What am I supposed to do? Can I even win? You know, what are my outs? Do I need Shroud to have nothing? That's the effect that a single Burning Earth has had on this game. And the funny thing is, is if Shroud has nothing, he still can attack with a Mutavolt uh -huh. for the kill. Yep, because he's representing seven damage. That Mutavolt plus that Thunderbolt Hulk, like five plus two for you math majors at home is still seven. And uh, in comes now that some is of the team. That is very telling. Lebedovich can't send with the boar, sends in for four, five, six, seven. Now Shroud's at six, he draws his card. Does he have a burn spell? Does he have a Chandra's Phoenix? Does he have Bonfire the Damned hardcast for two? He can have so many things here, but on the flip side, Lebedovich could have something as simple as a Selesnya Charm. He has two of them in his, in his deck to take care of that Thunderbolt Hulk. Right? Selesnya Charm, a card that does save the day a little, but it doesn't save the day all by itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has to hope that Andrew does not follow up with anything very relevant. I think I see a, is that another Thunderbolt? It does look to be. And on the surface, that gets the job done. But, you know, you see Shroud, he doesn't know Lebedovich's list. And that's a very real thing. So he doesn't know exactly what he needs to play around. You see a, sho you see a shoulder shrug, Show me. a Thundermaw Hellkite, a trigger, <laughs> and is it... Well, it is going to... I mean, Slashing Charm's not going to save him. Yeah, so Cell Charm doesn't do it anymore. Uh -huh. Double Cell Charm does it. But Double Cell Charm would have been the kill anyway. That's correct. And that okay. is going to do it. So Andrew Shroud shrugs his shoulders. Pretty good card to be shrugging your shoulders <laughs> with. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, just got, I just got Thunderbolt Hulk, guys. That's all I got, my man. And Mongol Red up one over the Pro Tour champion with his Niagara deck. Because we're going to move to the sideboards here, Adrian. Yeah. I want to start with Osips because he's going to be on the play. And this is where a player can get an advantage by playing an unknown strategy. Yeah. Lebedovich has seen Chandra's Phoenix. He's seen Thunderbolt Hellkites. He's seen a Mutavolt. And he's seen a main deck Burning Earth. You take a look at his sideboard here, he's got a Mizium Mortars, he's got two Rave Revelation, two Rest in Peace, one Triumph of Ferocity, two Assemble the Legion, three Pillar of Flame, one Bonfire of the Dam to go along with his three main deck, two Boros Charms, and a Selesnya Charm. Yep. You don't really have a great idea what Andrew Shroud's playing. Well, actually, I think that you have an idea, but you're wrong, you know what I mean? Sure. I think, I think that you expect that what happened is Andrew did not draw the Cackler part of his deck. Yep. And so it's very reasonable to play a card like Bonfire against that, when actually, I think Bonfire is kind of bad against it Andrew. It couldn't be any worse against Andrew. <laughs> you, know? you take a look at his cards, you're never going to sweep anything like you would against a normal red deck. He's got, again, Boros Reckoner, Chandra's Phoenix, Hellrider, and Thunderbolt Hellkite. You might be trade your, your Bonfire's going to trade one for one. Yeah. You know, and deal some points of damage, of yeah, course. Yeah, I mean, like the pillar in Osip's board, um, you would probably end up bringing that in. And we it saw will, him do it earlier yeah. against Eric Rill. And the thing is, is that it's not terrible because it does get rid of a Phoenix forever, uh -huh. but it's not great either because that's all it does. So if you're if you're Osip and you're working with perfect information like we are here in the booth and you guys are at home, you know, you're probably born in Ray of Revelation, but again, Ray of Revelation is, is interesting because like it's just there for Burning Earth, and then if, if Shroud doesn't draw Burning Earth, then it doesn't do anything. Yep. You know, are you going to board a Mizium Mortars? You didn't really see anything that's great to Mizium Mortars. You saw Chandra's Phoenix. Bleh. You saw Thermite yep. Hellkite. Mortars doesn't kill that. You know, to me, the Celestian Terminator sideboard is the only card that he can justifiably sideboard in here. You know, I, um, I mostly agree with you. Um, however, I think that when I don't like Ray of Revelation or Disenchant effects against a card like, say, Burning Earth, the reason I usually don't like them is from the classic... Mike Flora's concept of threat theory, answer theory, which, you know, he took from somewhere else, but the thing about it is, you don't want to be the one trying to find the answer that's dead if they don't have the threat. Yeah. However, sometimes things are so terrible for you, you just have to suck it up. Yep. You just have to be like, 
I guess I'm gonna bring in these uh, these Ray of Revelations and hope I only draw them when I need them. You know, a perfect example of a card that, you know, uh, causes this to happen a lot is Birthing Pod. That's where fair. people have, you know, cards like Pithing Needle or they have naturalized effects and they're like, yeah, I have to kill that Birthing Pod. And what some people don't realize is the Birthing Pod deck just goes, I can operate perfectly fine without Birthing Pod. My deck just goes on steroids when I do have Birthing Pod. So you boarding in a Disenchant effect, that's exactly what I want. Yeah, I don't rely not... on Birthing Pod. It's just very good when I draw it. Now, Andrew, um, he has a couple of things that he can do that are of use. Mizium Mortars for him is actually very good. Yes. You know, he actually gets a lot of value out of Mizium Mortars, and that's a card that he can bring in. But then the uh, thing is, he wants to still maintain a deck that can finish the game, right? So you don't want to you don't want to take out too many things. But he does have all of these other kind of cards like the Searing Spear, Pillar of Flames. They're useful, but they're not great. But mostly, I'm looking at Bonfire. Do you like Bonfire in this matchup? I don't like it because hard casting it is going to do borderline nothing, and you have to get yourself in a perfect situation to miracle it for the relevant amount. I am totally in agreement. My expectation is what we're going to see is two Mizium Mortars brought in, and I actually think he's going to bring in Ratchet Bomb. Okay. Now, the reason that I think he's going to bring in Ratchet Bomb is it can kill... He doesn't know that Osip has Huntmasters or not. Sure. But it can be, it's brought in against Huntmasters, and then it's also brought in against the combination of Boros Reckoner slash Loxodon Smiter. They can put a Fortress down of these three drops, and if you blow up your, you know, your Ratchet Bomb, it's okay that it took a couple of turns, because you're not actually losing anything on your own side. And you certainly don't, you, you, you don't hate that it kills Scavenging News as well. Yeah. You see both players are going to keep their seven cards. we got a stopping ground here for Lebedovich on his first turn. He's going to play a Sun Petal Grove. going to follow it up with a Voice of Resurgence, as we see Mr. Shroud here. Again, a Louisville, Kentucky native. Pro Tour Top 8 at Pro Tour, Dra at Pro Tour Dragon's Maze many, just a few moons ago, excuse me, as he's going to take two here from that Voice of Resurgence. Lebedov is going to follow up with a Loxanon Smiter. He says that he is a moto grinder, and he needs his laptop to be able to live from day to day. <laughs> That's fair. Boros Reckoner down. Now, if Andrew feels like he's on the D, Reckoner is a good guy on the D. Um, Osep, if he comes in here and does not stop and kill that Reckoner first, will have to trade at least one of his creatures away. Uh-huh. And, you know, it, it, depending on what Shroud's hand here is, if Lebedovich just stacks with the Smiter, Shroud just might go, all right, let's just trade. Boom. Yep. And target this. Yep. Yeah, and let's just get this off the table. Which Fine is, by this him. Is a, this is a good turn for him. If he just wants to make the game go super long, as you're going to see Lebedovich play a Boros Reckoner of his own and a Gavity Township, then this is working exactly how he wants it to. Are we going to see another Burning Earth here where he is behind on the board? I mean, him being behind so far, it's actually so kind of bonkers when you have Burning Earth as compared to Mana Barbs. Mana Barbs hits every land that gets tapped. Burning Earth only hits non-basics it's much more reasonable to drop it when you know that it's only going to be your opponent that gets hurt. Here's three mana. Here's another Boros Reckoner from Shroud. He's going to pass the turn back. Reckoner is such a great card, too, because it's yeah. great oh. on offense, great on defense. Here's one that's always good on offense. There's a Thunder Maul Hellkite there from Lebedovich. He is going to be the aggressor here in this matchup, knowing that Shroud has to play defense and does not want to be in a situation that he was in last game where Shroud was able to turn the corner. Lebedovich couldn't finish him off, and another Thunder Maul got the job done for Shroud. Now you see Osip here deciding, does my Reckoner come in? Osip, one of the great players of the game's history. It's cool to see him uh, out there battling it out. It's been a long time since I've watched him play. Agreed. Agreed. Again, Hall of Fame eligible. Don't think he's going to make it this go around, but doesn't mean he can't make it in future years. As you see him pondering how he wants to attack All it. All in. I like it. Everybody's like going to get in. I do. I, I like it because it puts Shroud to the test. Make him make a decision. You yeah. know what you have. You know that you know your Thunderball Hellkite's potential draws of more Thunderbolt Hellkites. You just want to get this game over with. You don't want to allow him to get set up. Yeah, I like him. If, if I'm Shroud here, um, and obviously there's many choices one could make. Personally, I like blocking the Reckoner and giving it first strike. That kills his Reckoner. His Reckoner will trigger and kill your Reckoner. You kill the voice. You know, like, the worst case scenario for you is, is still pretty good. Alternately, you could block the voice here. Just eat up the voice. Leave the Reckoner to hit you. That knocks you down to 10, the, or down 8 life, down to 10. Keeps you with your Reckoner, but also keeps him with his. Yeah, you know, the Reckoner battles are kind of interesting, too, because there is also the argument to be made that Lebedovich just take his Reckoner ends up taking three from first strike, and he just says, all right, Trout, you take three as well. Yeah. You know, I don't care about your Reckoner. Lots so, of choices. Yeah, so are we going to play the Reckoner ping pong Ooh, game? Oh, no, no, he's going to eat up, 
eat up a voice. Half a voice? A token is left behind it. A and token it's not is a no slouch. It's a 3-3 three, three at least. So and now the, the damage, uh, I think he might have a shock. No, he does not have any shocks in his deck. No. Okay, never mind. I was, uh, I thought I saw a shock in his hand and I was wondering where the damage was going to go. I was thinking, uh, but I was completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so no worries. You, you no might worries. send it elsewhere. All right, so Shroud's going to draw his card. Now, not the best time for Burning Earth. Now he's actually got to get some things done here. And two from the Reckoner got sent to Osif. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if what was going to happen is that we we're going to see two go to the Reckoner from the from his Reckoner, and then a, and then a shock to finish it off because sure. it puts Osip to the test. Do you send the two back to the Reckoner? Sure. But sure. there was not a shock there, so. And now Andrew, he's chuckling over something in his hand. I can't quite make it out. I'm not sure if Andrew can make it out either. If you're listening earlier, his uh, these are not his glasses. His glasses were lost. Yeah. He's piloting a little half blind. I see a Mizium mortars. Yeah, but can't overload it right now. And, and honestly, this is one of the poorer times that even if he could overload Mizium Mortars, would not be so great. Reckoner would take four. It would get to send four damage somewhere. Wouldn't take care of the Thunderbolt Hellkite. So Mizium Mortar as well, it does have a lot of upside in this matchup. It certainly is not very good right now. So what is he going to do? There's Mutavolt. a Mutavolt. That's a good one. Is he going to get into the Wow. Ooh. That's exciting. I did not oh. expect to see this. So now this is an attack here from Shroud. He's going to send Boros Reckoner into the red zone. I think I see a Brimstone Volley in his hand. This is surprising. What is he up to? Oh, Sip suddenly looks at his yeah, hand I mean, and he's like... If you're Lebedovich, I think this is the last thing you expected to see happen this turn. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, looks to the sky for a moment. Yeah, you're, I'm at 18, you're at 10, you're uh, attacking me? Yeah, he's like, I don't want to make you into Johnny Chan somehow. God. You know, what's, <laughs> and this is this is the, the benefit of playing an unknown quantity yet again. This attack from Shroud is just, it, it makes Osip think so much and potentially overthink. What do you have in your deck, man? I don't know what's in a mono red deck with main deck burning or What's going on here? As he's just going to play another Boris Reckoner and pass the turn back. It really, really makes you think about what is in my opponent's deck. I have no clue. As informed as you can be on this format, and a lot of players in this room are informed trying to win this Invitational, you've got very little idea what's in Andrew Shroud's model red deck. Thankfully, we have deck list, or we'd be guessing right along <laughs> with Shroud. Osip here has a Reckoner of his own. I think I see another voice. Now remember, the elemental in play is equal to the number of creatures you have in play. So a pre-combat card like Voice of Resurgence will give you a 4-4 elemental, or change it to a 4-4 elemental in play. If he lays the second creature, which his current mana won't allow, that Gavney Township's colorless. Uh, in with Thunder Maw. Yeah, so I'm no creatures post-combat. All creatures coming post-combat. There's another Ooh. Reckoner. I wonder if Osip was thinking this, thinking about Blasphemous Act as a, a thing that Andrew might be doing, yep. and then, you know, just trying to wonder if that would get there or not. Right now it would not get there because of, Andrew doesn't have it, but even if he did, since they both have Reckoners, the uh, active player, not active player, would mean that Osip would win should a, you know, imaginary Blasphemous Act hit. Shroud draws his card. And he is just going to concede the game. And you saw the way that he drew his card. He set it down for a very long time. That could be a Bonfire of the Damned, or that could be a ploy. Yeah. That's the interesting thing about that situation, where it looks obvious. You know, it, it's very easy to say, oh, Bonfire of the Damned. Well, you can't cast that, because I've got out two Boris Reckoners. Ha, ha, ha. Andrew Shroud. Yeah, go ahead. That could be Andrew Shroud saying, hey, I want you to think about Bonfire of the Damned for the next game, because I have four in my main deck that I have sideboarded out. And maybe you'll uh, be scared about playing around me miracling one. Andrew Shout is on the left here, playing mono red. Longtime Star City Games uh, watchers might remember him way back when. Basically, he is the person that was the uh, first guy to win with Red Blue Delver. That's correct. In Legacy. Yep. And 
that list, I think, basically kind of changed how people thought about legacy and made them realize, you know, there's a lot of other ways to do this. Yeah, you don't have to be Rug Delver every time. You can be Blue Red with Price of Progress and, you know, some counter spells and some Wastelands and some Disruption and maybe even the addition of Young Pyromancer from M14 slides into that deck as well. We will see. Yeah, that begins next round. Legacy, my favorite constructed format. But uh, right now, we have a third game between Andrew Shrout on the left, Johnny Hot Sauce, as he's known online, and Osip Levadovich. Now, honestly, Andrew Shrout on the play here, he does not get as much value on the play as most red decks do. There's still value for him, because it means Osip's coming out the gate a step behind him with his Smiters and his Reckoners. But unlike a lot of other red decks, Andrew does not go one-two punching on the first turns. He waits till turn three. And honestly, I think that's actually a good thing for Shrout here in this particular matchup, because we saw a little bit earlier in round one, we had Lebedovich versus Eric Rill in a feature match. Lebedovich dispatching of Rill pretty easily in three games. And I think that if you're Shrout, you know, you're probably happy that you're not playing the Rakdos Cacklers and Strong Kirk Nobles of the world, because Lebedovich's cards are so good against that deck, and he even has some more tools in his sideboard, that, you know, that matchup would be unfavorable, where this one at least is winnable or even potentially favorable. One of the things that I, if I were Andrew, one of the things I would wish I had was zealous conscripts in my sideboard. Yeah. There are none of those. But I mean, in a match like this, where there can just be some huge monster, if you just have one creature in play that can attack, and they go smiter to hold you off, if you follow up with conscripts, that usually is all she wrote. Yep. And um, right now, I know, talking with Andrew a couple of days ago about this list, he wasn't 100% settled on his, uh, his sideboard. But I really like how it looks. Those of you who are curious at home, three Ratchet Bomb, three Possibility Storm, an amazing anti-control card, three Shock, two Rolling Temblor, two Mizium Mortars, two Chandra Pyromancer. And if you're just joining us and you're wondering, well, where is this Burning Earth? Isn't that good in his deck? There are four in the main. He did not bother sideboarding them. He was main decking them because that's just the world he sees right now at this tournament. And it's very funny to see, you know, a card like Burning Earth in the main deck and Chandra Pyromaster, a card that, uh, a card that people are wondering if that's going to be a thing. Is it going to be a player or not? And it's in the sideboard. We'll see if it's ever going to move to the main deck or not. As we do have an update on our back table result, Jerry Thompson wins game number one over Brian Brondwin. That's correct, game number one. Nice. So this that match could be taking a little while here. And if with any luck, we'll be able to cut back to that one after this one is over. But we got to decide a winner here first. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves before we go to Thompson Brondwin. I've got an answer for your question about Chandra Pyromancer. The answer is yes, it will be a player. You think so? Oh yeah. And in play, a Mountain Go. All right, so a stopping round from Levadovich after he does take a mulligan. Osip keeps his seven, Shrout, or excuse me, Shrout keeps his seven, Levadovich keeps his six, and there is the Ratchet Bomb that you felt that he was going to bring in. Yep. And I agree with you on that one. It is a, it is a clean answer to a lot of different things. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize, when you go a little bigger, you don't have to kill them quickly. Yep. Now, the way you make up for that is by hitting hard. You can be a little slower as long as every time you swing your punch that it's a monster. That's definitely true. Haymakers do get the job done, and here's the first one from Shroud. It is going to be a Boros Reckoner. You see the boar in play for Lebedovich. It is a 3-3, so he's cleared for takeoff. Going to come on in. Interesting question here on whether he blocks or not. Andrew has to decide whether or not he feels that he's in a beatdown situation or not. Now, because both of these decks are aggressive decks, either one of them has the ability to take that role on the question, who is the beatdown? Andrew has to decide, does he, where does he think he is? He's got to look at his hand and decide, what is happening right now? Is this a race? Do I want to be racing? Do I want to block? Yeah, does he? I mean, blocking there is even difficult too because of a card like uh, like a Gorkland Rampager makes it into a seven seven. You deal three to the Reckoner. He can't kill the boar. You see a Loxodon on Smiter come in here now. The elevator's going up on the Ratchet Bomb. You see Shroud does end up taking the three from the boar, but now he's got Reckoner ready on defense. And now here's a fourth land, and it is going to be a Museum Mortars. Nice. And in for three we go with the Reckoner. So and now he's he like, gets it's a, a race. Aggro. That's yeah. what he says. He says, I'm ready for this one. Now, Osip, of course, 
has the same kinds of top end. They both have Thunder Maws at their hands, or in their, at access. In for three, Searing Spear to take care of it. Wow, if like Osip that. or Clan Rampagers it, Andrew has the Ratchet Bomb, yep. so he's not afraid of it. So just trading one for one a bunch now. Here's a Boros Reckoner, stomping ground to play tap for Levinovich. Elevator going up on Ratchet Bomb, going to three counters. As Shroud's going to untap, he's going to draw. And does he have a land for that Thunder Maw Hellkite in his hand? That is the question. And I believe he does, but does he want to pull the trigger on that right now? It looks like a land in the far left to me. Yeah. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here in the booth with the one and only Cedric Phillips. We are watching new school champ Andrew Shrout with old school champ Osip Levidovich duking it out here in this aggro on aggro matchup. Thundermaw Hellkite comes down. Both of these decks are very mid-range aggro. Um, Andrew Shrout mono red with main deck burning earth and Osip Levidovich is Naya. So Levinovich is going to take 5, he's going to go down to 12 for that Thunderwall Hellkite. Now he's got something that he seriously needs to answer, and one card that you do see in Levinovich's hand right now, Adrian, is the Ray of Revelation. He did board it in, he did end up losing to Burning Earth game number 1, here comes his Boros Reckoner, but this is the, this is the thing, you know, did Shroud leave in Burning Earth? You know, he certainly hasn't cast one yet, you don't even know if he left one if you're Levinovich, but you're so scared of the card that you have to board in something mediocre like a Ray of Revelation just to be able to deal with it, as it looks like he's going to play Scavenging Ooze, but he might tap his man a little bit differently, and there we go for a Scavenging Ooze. There's a remove activation, going to gain a life, put a counter on that bad boy, push himself up to 13, and how about we do it one more time, it looks like. This gives him a 4-4, four four, more than big enough to kill the Reckoner. But... On the flip side of things, that Reckoner is going to be great at blocking that Scavenging Ooze oh, yeah. and take one big punch in the face and deal it back to Levinovich. You'll notice that in that attack, Andrew had the option to block. He did not because he views this as he is in the driver's seat. Yeah. Attacks for five. Osip goes down to nine. There are no creatures left in any graveyard at this point. So let's see what Levinovich draws. You see a Sun Petal Grove, you see a Voice of Resurgence, and it looks like the Ray of Revelation are his only three cards at this juncture. No answer to that big bad flying dragon right now. Now, if Andrew blocks a attacking Scavenging Ooze, that would knock Osip down to five. The Reckoner would die, so Osip would be able to go up to six. That's but true. all it would take is a single burn spell from Andrew to finish things off. Do you think the red deck has burn spells? Maybe. I've heard that they sometimes like to play oh, that kind of Potentially card. has one of those? Okay. You see Levinovich going through the motions here. You know, the thing the thing for him in this situation is that he's got to do something. Because he doesn't do anything, yeah, Thunderball's just going to get the job done. So he's got to do something here. Trying to figure out what that something is, you see a voice of resurgence. That's a little bit more difficult. And is he, he's just going to pass the turn back. Yeah. Look at the power of an opposing Boros Reckoner. Halting this offense... Incredible. Absolutely incredible. As Shroud doesn't even need, even need to play a spell on his end step if he has one, he can just draw comfortably, leave his Ratchet Bomb where it's at, and have his Reckoner keep doing what it's been doing, which is play defense. Andrew Shroud at 14 life. On the other side of the table, you can see 9 potential damage. He comes in with, looks like, both of them. I love it. This means that he probably has a burn spell because whatever damage that wrecker is going to end up taking, he can finish off with another point of, with some sort of burn. Basically what this reckoner is doing is saying, hey, I'm attacking for three. You can block the voice researchers, but you're taking something from this reckoner this turn. There's no way you're taking nothing because I, I have no reason to give this first strike unless I absolutely want to. Also, Shroud can keep in mind that there is, at least, there is only one scavenging was activation depending on how things go. Another Currently no creatures in the graveyard, but... And, and no open white. There's uh -huh. nothing, that, no Selesnya charm to fear. Uh -huh. He actually has multiple green mana open, but again, like, one creature will only die. Yeah. So, you know, how many activations can we get from a scavenging use right now? For Levadovich, you know, there are no creatures in the graveyard. Maybe after the dust settles with some Reckoner effects on the stack, that can happen. But it's going to be very, very difficult to gain a lot of life, and you see how difficult of a situation this is 
for the Pro Tour Venice champion. Osip going through all of the options. He's got that Ray of Revelation not of any use in his hand right now. The other card, I did not see it. Is it Sitting with just a land. A land yep. and a... Yeah. So here's your block. Boros Reckoner stepping in front of an opposing Boros Reckoner. Shroud says triggers. Going upstairs. There's a serious Boom. spear, and that That's is it. gonna do it. So Andrew Shroud is going to win this game. Two matches to one. Mono Red, a bit of a brew. 4-0 through the standard portion. Perhaps we can have a little sit down with him in the sideboard. See what he was thinking playing this deck this weekend. Certainly worked out. Even though he lost his glasses. <laughs> he won four matches. And this might be a real strategy moving forward. Lebedovich's first loss. He moves down to 3-1. and one, Off to a perfectly fine start. But if you're Andrew Shot, you have to be absolutely thrilled. Your gamble, quote-unquote, paid off. Right. I mean, knowing Andrew, 